we, um, we have bots today. And bots are often imitated or replace the human behavior. A lot of human staff, human behaviors, though we haven't gotten there yet, but the whole idea of bots is to actually imitate humans, imitate their behaviors, imitate a lot of things that they do. And that's the whole idea of a bot. So I, I believe we, uh, with this, are familiar with what a bot is. Uh, typically, they do repetitive tasks, and they can do them much faster than human users could. So, so yeah, you, you see a lot of um, tasks that today, like, say, for example, the customer service people, you see them attending to a lot of customers, and they have, like, a way of attending to various customers. And we can actually have a we can have a bot doing all those things. You see them doing doing those tasks even better than the humans. But it's just training those bots then, of course. So yeah, we see that today we learn and use technology. A lot of us today want to learn front end, want to learn back end, want to learn cloud platform, want to learn various things, like machine learning and all those things. We want to learn it. But, but really, what we should be doing is to teach technology to learn about us. We need to teach technology to learn about how we behave, how we do a lot of things, how we answer questions, how we coordinate things, how we listen to a lot of people, how we observe and anticipate various things. And it is really important. And one of those things that we should focus on is to teach technology to learn about us. And the whole idea of doing this is you can take this like um, um, a father and a child. The father will try to train the child such that in the, um, when, when the father grows up, the child will be able to do a lot of things for him, fetch for him, um, take care of the family and all those things. And this is basically investment for the parents. So we need to teach technology to be able to learn about us such that we can relax and not do anything. Then technology will be able to say, ah, you are meant to take your lunch by so what's happening do you do you want me to do this do you want me to do that and that's the that's what technology is really going to you see that in the 1980s a lot of them a lot of people were using and what was in town then was various desktops you see the big desktops with those those huge bags then in 1990s you saw internet coming to place and people can go and visit websites so you could communicate with people all around the world via your website. We so saw in 2000s that we now had mobile phones. Now, there's a lot of, there's some shift between 1980 and 2000s. Now, a lot of things have happened. A lot of, a lot of activities have, have gone on. A lot of things have changed. And we, I, I would like us to notice the trend between 1980 and the future. So, yeah, we see in 2000s that we have a, a lot of mobile phones. And people were still started doing social media, of course. Main social media when mobile phones came in was Facebook. Then we had a lot of people do Twitter. I think there was to go there and Blackberry thinking and other things. And really, you know what most people use the mobile phone for was to chat. Basically, now we see that we are approaching a future whereby natural language between people and technology will be the main thing. Where people and technology. There will be this constant communication, and technology will be able to understand humans. Technology will be able to understand what humans want, how to interact with humans, and all those things. And that we see this trend between 1980 and now. We see that this is actually what the future wants. So yeah, I know you've been doing cloud since day one. I was aware about infrastructure as a service, software as a, as a service, platform as a service. Yeah. But, but, but yeah, we are bringing, bringing something even bigger and better. We are bringing conversation as a platform. We are, we are building a platform where people can relate, people can communicate properly and be able to even do, achieve a lot of tasks by just communicating. And this communication is basically between three main people, the developers that will integrate those um, intelligence into the bots, Business, the opportunity, the business um, needs where you get to reach out to people and solve their problems. And those people, you are actually solving their problems. So, yeah, today, and what we'll see in the future is humans interacting with bots. 
Yeah, um, we you see a lot. Of, so, yeah, um, we see a lot of these things coming up uh, in the future. So let me just go straight into um, the components of the bot. So, yeah, so components of the bot. Sorry, okay. So components of a bot. I will know a, a bot basically con has three components. The dialogue, the intent, and the entity. So yeah, what is the dialogue? A dialogue is basically the UI you see, the user interface you see when building when interacting with the bot. Sorry if we are okay, yeah. Good. Please try to mute your mic when you join so we, we don't have all these issues we are having right now. So yeah, as I was saying, a dialogue is just basically um the bot way of communicating with the user. So all the things you see, like the cards, all those questions you see asking, all the things you see on the UI, those are called dialogues. And dialogue is just a way of saying, this is what the user wants. How am I going to ask him? How am I going to determine what the flow will look like? And that's the whole idea of dialogue. As you can see, this image I have here, you can see. Um, oh, yeah. okay. Hello. I need to confirm that you guys can hear me. Okay. Great. So please, if you are not talking, please try to mute your mic, please. Really important. Okay, so um so so yeah, that's what the dialogue is. And from the image you can see um the the bot asking a question, user answering, all these flows you are see around are the dialogue. Now we have what we call intent. And intent is my my what I will call the major part of the bot. And intent is just basically we are talking to a bot and the bot does not understand humans. So intent is basically a way the bot can understand what you are saying. So for example, um I go to a bot and I say I would like to book a flight. The the bot is just saying strings, it's just saying text. But it needs, the bot needs to understand that what you actually mean there is book a flight. You get so a way of, the bot understands what you are typing and what you are telling the bot, what we call the intent. And we have entities, and entity is just like the naming words you find during the conversation. Like in the intent conversation, we have flight. Flight is an entity. Then what's the weather like in France? The entity here is France, meaning so for example, when when the when the bot sees this conversation, it sees France, France, and recognizes France as a country. So country there is the entity. So entity is just basically picking up nouns and understanding what kind of noun it is. Because that's just basically it. So, yeah, so basically we talk about dialogue steps. So um, uh, so I'll, I'll try to, um, with this slide, show you various implementations of dialogues. But this one's going to be a pretty straightforward implementation for dialogue. So this is just a basic chatbot that handles payments. So for example, we have a main dialogue. Main dialogue is just the main thing that it shows you. So if my main dialogue for this chatbot is, would you what do you, would you like to first first thing make payment or check check balance? This on its own is a dialogue. Then you see the user says make payment please. Immediately it says make payment please. You can spin up another dialogue to say, okay, this is how I want to make payments. Spin up the dialogue that will ask him further questions about making payments. And that's where you see here, who would you like to pay? Uh, you increase the account details. I, I, I won't spin up another dialogue because at this point, you are still trying to make payments. I are not done with the making payments. So you are still on the make payments dialogue. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I have the account details now. How much do you want to pay? 100 um, thank you, I've paid 100 pounds. And that seems to be the end of the dialogue. Um, sorry, I need to be sure um, if someone is recording. Um, I don't know if anyone is recording. It is, yeah, it is recording. It's recording. Okay. okay, thank you very much. So so yeah, so yeah, we see 
that after you are done with this dialogue, it took you back to the main dialogue. So this is the whole idea of how dialogues work, um, a way to um, get information from the user. So yeah, it takes you back to the main dialogue, and now you're asking, now this time around, the user wants to check account balance. So you say which account, current or savings, yes, current, then what next? Yeah, and it, it spins up the um, current balance dialogue and continues like that on and on and on. So I, I, I'm pretty sure um, with this flow, you guys should be able to understand what the dialogue is. So so yes, you could see um, in that little flow of what the dialogue is that um, you can actually interact statically with the bot and based on garbage in, garbage out, you got to understand what you're saying. But applications actually need to understand people. Applications need to understand, humans are very complex. Like we are, they are the most complex beings on earth. And it is very hard to understand what a human wants, what a human is trying to say, and all those things. And simply just the bot alone, you can't really understand what the human means. So you need to integrate intelligence into that bot. And Microsoft, Azure AI has a lot of tools for you to integrate to the bot. So, for example, we have the Cox Custom Vision. Probably you want to detect images or detect patterns. You can use Custom Vision. You can use Face API. Maybe you want to do like <clears throat> a face authentication on the user. You want to determine if the user is actually smiling or maybe a way to determine from the comments that the person is actually feeling sorry. They'll be like, oh, oh something there. So, there are lots of various tools that you can actually use to add intelligence to the board so that to understand people. Yeah, love these tools, uh, cognitive services in Azure. So yeah, what is language understanding intelligence system? So we saw a lot of a simple, a simple dialogue. So yeah, as I said earlier, the board needs to understand humans and how humans behave. So we have Louis, and Louis is a platform. Sorry, if you are not speaking, kindly mute your mic. I'm having this background disturbance. Please, if you are not talking, please mute your mic. So as I was saying, um, we have Louis, and what Louis does is basically to understand what you are typing. Where is this mask coming from? And what Louis does basically is to understand what you what you are typing. So for example, someone says hello. So hello, yeah, you, the bot can go to Louis and get the intent. And if you can see under here, the idea of Louis is to detect the intent of whoever the user is typing. So Yura says hello, the, Louis understands that hello is a greeting. So Louis will return it back to you that this guy is trying to greet you. So then you, you say hello back, right? Then what then the user says what is Dan Driscoll's title? Then this understands that you are, you are trying to get what Dan Driscoll's title is. So probably you would have stated in Louis that um the you should spin up a dialogue called probably um, title. So when you have this kind of question, I get the intent that this guy is actually looking for a title, you spin up the dialogue. We also extract entities from Louis. And as I said earlier, that entity is just a naming word. So at this point here, um, seeing um, this conversation here, you understand that type, and this crew is someone's name. So you, you would have stated that as the, the, the entity name is Dan Disco. So we can use Louis to actually add intelligence to a bot so that the bot will understand what the user is trying to type. So there's QNA Maker. And QNA Maker from the name QNA is just basically to build FAQ bot. So I'm pretty sure you'd have seen on a lot of websites today where you see, um, kindly check our FAQ below. And you see some questions, you see some answers. So you can actually do that also on um, bot framework. You can have like we have something called a QA maker where you can go there and state various frequently asked questions and answers. 
and connect your bot to it such that when the bot sees those kind of questions, it will just go to QNE Maker and pick up the answer and give it to you straight up. So, as you can see from uh, the slide there, the, the user can just ask questions like, what is, what is the URL of the social page? Or how can I get to contact? Then you just put a direct answer on QNE Maker to show that to you. So, there is more to bots than just text. So, bots can actually interact more than just asking you questions and you typing something and all those things. Bots can use cards. As a, for example, you can see a card showing summary of your flight travel and all those things. So, bots can actually use cards like to interact. And you can see a lot of various interesting UI you can actually display to your user while, convert, while a conversation is going on in the bot. You can actually do a lot of these, these things like shopping, you can do receipts, you can do even graphical view and show the user. You can even do, um, I know you guys have seen Slack bots where you can just quickly do reject or, or approve a PR immediately just from your bot. So yeah, um, let's go into building a bot. I think I've been talking too much. We need to get into the action. So yeah, building a bot. Oh, today, uh, Microsoft has um, an SDK called Bot Framework. And what you do, what the Bot Framework does is it gives you a bot, bot builder SDK, it gives you the development portal, and helps you to connect to various cognitive services. So the bot builder SDK is just um, an SDK where you can just use various um, tools in the bot builder library to build the bot. And they have all the things you need right there. All you just need to do is to import it and start using it. So for guys that do Python, we have, um, we have uh, you can actually write, yeah, the, you can actually use the Python SDK to build your bot. Also .NET, there's .NET support, so you can write .NET with the bot builder. And those are right Node.js. Of course, yeah, you can actually use Node.js to um yeah to to build the bot. And they have various things like built-in prompts and command dialogues to simply use. So a lot of you might be thinking that am I going to be designing all those things that I've been saying earlier? A lot of you be thinking am I going to be designing all these things that yeah Am I going to be writing CSS for all these buttons and other things? No, you don't need to do that. All you don't need to do is to um, in, um, install the SDK and start calling a lot of functions that will do that for you automatically. So they have support for rich attachments like image, card, video, docs, and a lot of other stuff. They, they have an emulator where um, you can you can see you can actually test your bot locally. So I'll, I'll be doing demo on that also. So yeah, they have a development portal where you can go and test and see how it looks on, um, say, Slack, on email, Teams, and a lot of the channels that they support. And you can connect it to Louis, as I said earlier, and QA Maker. So yeah, that, these, are, these are the SDK looks like. This is the Python um, version of the SDK. So for those are at Python. But yeah, of course, there is no JS and um, dot net. So various channels that, that you can um, integrate your bot with. We have Teams, we have um, Office 365, um, Trilo, um, Facebook, Skype, and a lot of other um, channels that you can use to integrate your bot. So yeah, I'll move straight into my demo for today. So so yeah, um, just a simple disclaimer, uh, my demo will be based on the project already existed. My, my project, my demo will be on the project that exists today because um, uh, we might not have all the time to start installing dependencies, and getting started. It takes a little lot of time to set up. So, well, I'll just um, walk you through the whole setup and how it works. So um, straight up, I'll go into Visual Studio Code. Yeah. 
I'm sorry about this. Okay. So great. So so um I like no JS. I like JavaScript, so um that's why I think JS code of course. So basically, um I think before I do this, let me just show you guys where's my browser. So let me just show you guys um the emulator here. Yeah? What framework? So here you see um a lot of step by step with studio on how to build it, but we have the C sharp, JavaScript, and Python, and I said earlier, so three major supports, and we have various tutorials on how to build it. Great add add a QA maker concepts, um how to design, develop, and other things. So yeah, you can follow we have step by step these procedures here that you can follow. So if I come here and look at the JavaScript here. So for uh, my demo will be based on JavaScript, of course. So for those that um, will be using JavaScript, you need to have like Visual Studio Code installed. Uh, you need to have Node.js, of course, installed on your local computer. You might not need this, but yeah, if you want, you want to be lazy and just use the template straight up. What Joe does is to generate a template for you. Uh, of course, you need Git to um, to do what you need to do. Then there's emulator. Emulator is just what shows the um the bot design interface how the bot looks like so it's a way to test your bot see how it is and restify of course for the server okay so um so first off you need to do npm install and npm install will generate a package of json for you to, um sorry um npm init will generate a package of json for you then you can now do npm install and that will generate your node modules and that's pretty much the background of this project so yeah i have my app.js file and and that's my entry my entry file app.js for my node.js application of course so as you can see here um i already installed the bot builder library so i did npm install Bot builder to get this. I did npm install, rectify. Uh, those are the two major um, libraries I'm using right now. So, yeah, for those that don't know JS, you understand creating a server using rectify. Then, this is just basically me listening to port 3978. Um, yeah, for, for you to build a bot and connect to it, you need to connect via an app ID and the app password. So, so creating that chat connector, you you don't need to do all those things from scratch. There's um, support for it on Bot Builder. So all you need to do is to uh, create an instance of Bot Builder that channel connector, and this will create it for you. Nah. So yeah, this is also um, what we use to store the memory storage. Uh, so yeah, then yeah, it's just the first dialog you call when the um, bot loads. Yeah, that's pretty much what. Yeah, nothing much. Yeah. So I'll, um, so yeah, this is this project is um, um one of the projects we built um in University of Lagos, uh, the Microsoft Tech Community there. Uh, this this so what this bot does basically is um it asks you a series of questions. And determines um, um, the possibility of you having um, COVID-19. Possibility of you having um, COVID-19. So yeah, I think first, what I should do first is to show you the bot. Then you can walk through um, how we, we built it. So yeah, um, so so yeah, this is a new JS application. I have to run the event entry app, which is load app for JS or app. That will automatically pick up and create the server. So I did, did console the log here and say and um, present the rectify listening. So yeah, and that's what you are seeing being logged here. The server name listening. So all this we just do for you is to create that server that you can connect to. But you will need the bot framework emulator to connect to that server. 
and that's why I will need to bring up my thought framework and later here. Yeah. So I have my thought framework and later, and you can just come here and create um, a new um, bot emulator that I can connect to your bot. So you, you can see here that uh, my bot framework emulator is listening on um, port 39, actually listening on 3978. And first thing you see is welcome to COVID-19 bot. So and that is because I already said that on conversation of the, the first thing that you would see when someone connects to the bot, please tell them to prompt this the user and, and welcome the user. And that's why I say um, the text, welcome to COVID-19, so that's what we do. And the first dialogue that should begin here is, I said, should be the welcome dialogue. So let me just quickly try to chat with you. I say, I um, ask me, do you have direct contact with you? Is taking care of a guy? No. no. No, um, I will travel to. Uh, I think I went to Italy, so I think yes, I will travel during the last 14 days. I uh, know I've been in lockdown. Are uh, you experiencing fatigue? Yes, sure. I've been because of this, you know, uh, yes, um, no headache. Um, they have soft throat, yes, they have diarrhea, no, cold, yes. Cough, yes. So it tells me to confirm some of the things I imputed. Uh, okay, I say yes, I can confirm that. And what to just do is to run some analysis and tell you the possibility of you having it, then give you some um, advice and some precautions that you need to take. And that's what I say thank you. So I did redo this. So if you check here in my app, the JS, I already said the first thing that you should do is to create the welcome dialogue. Now, I like to structure my code so, um, so um, I have a bot underscore core folder where I have the menu, the JS. Now you can see here that I'm depending on a lot of data. And first thing we did, was to um, create a UT folder, UT folder where we store, put all the data. So you have diagnosis data. Diagnosis data is um, it's just the one that shows which, which, which one you are, you are likely to be diagnosed with. So we have low, we have medium, and we have high. And some of the details, like the image I'm going to be showing, and all those things. So I just configured this here. I also have my questions. Um, I read where I configure each of those questions and then various points for it. So I have like a point system for each of those questions. If you have this, the three points. If you don't have it, there are points. So that, that's this one here. And I have recommendations. So recommendation is the carousel you see, like wash your hands, avoid close contact. So I have all those course recommendations. So when I created this recommendation, I now have the ones for low, for medium, and high. So I just said for low, medium, low. Pick up clean, pick up clean and pick up the another, another thing, uh, medium and I. Of course, I'm exporting each of those, each of these ones, and I have my welcome message too. So. And the whole idea of doing this is to make it dynamic, such that imagine I need to depend on um, an endpoint to get all this data. I can easily just integrate that into the current application that we have instead of having to start coding it one by one. So yeah, that's why I'm importing all these utils files. Um, Welcome message, pressure, and the rest. So, yeah. So, as I said earlier, the bot is not just for you, it uh, doesn't just allow you to do plain text conversations. You can do a lot of other things like hero cards, like thumbnail cards, and all those things. And these functions you see here are functions that can use to generate each of those cards. And there's a walkthrough of how to get these functions on the doc, doc, docs I showed you earlier on. So, yeah. Function to create hero card, and the idea is to reuse all these functions anytime you need them. And that's why I have all these ones here. So, the main thing I should be in the lookout for here is my welcome dialogue, because that's what is in my app.js. So, in my app.js, I already said call my welcome dialogue. So, I'll come here to the menu here, and that's the first thing that comes up my welcome dialogue. 
itself uh, and and yes just like um every other um um back end uh, um, uh, application you can store user data store a lot of things on sessions or user data like you use no gs very well you understand that so yeah i i, I have a way of storing the answers you are putting in storing the points as you are selecting and storing the current knowing the current question you are on and so the first thing when I come to bug the dialogue, I just say so the bug the dialogue has um it takes two for um the bug the dialogue takes two um argument takes the function and um, sorry the the um the dialogue itself and the callback. So the callback here is just basically what you will do when you call the function. And the first one shows what you show to the user. The second one shows what you give with the results. So yeah. Showing to the user, I say, should begin another dialogue called question. So coming to question, question here, one question here is doing is, and that's the idea of um, usable codes. I have a function called ask question. And what ask question does is to create and show me that card that you have seen here. Um, so you know, what ask question does is shows you this card. And that's why I have ask question here. And that's basically what I did here to call the ask questions question. So when I call the ask questions, the next thing to do is to show the options, right? So I come here and I do show option. And um, begin dialogue option. And what this option does is, is to basically create this. And this is done by this exactly. And I have a way of knowing what you select and what you do with what you select. So yeah, so yeah, this just this two dialogue is what performs this whole function where you click, keep clicking, keep clicking. So some someone wants to ask um why um it, it keeps showing when I just ask the dialogue showing twice. So yeah I already stated that um um where is this okay so I already stated here that session the current question is is zero. So I already I'm calling the dialogue here and in the dialogue, I have a return statement here that says, once the question is greater than the number of questions I have, don't ask for questions again. So what, what happens is, at this point, it won't pass this function. You keep asking the question and keep showing the options. Once you get to the point where um, it has used up all the questions that it has, then, of course, it's going to be greater than the question, number of questions you have. And I, I said once that happens, you go to what confirmation. A confirmation is what shows the um show you that sorry. Show you this search words. See the images are loading from somewhere. I didn't use it on local so yeah. That's why it's showing all this. So once it has exhausted number of questions, it has to now saying, "Okay, show me some confirmation of each of those things I have selected." And basically, that's what we have here. So I just have like a for loop here that looks through each of those questions, or each of those answers, and shows it to the student. And after that, I, I included like um, a prompt to confirm whether you want to stop or start over. And we have the admin. So when I click here, I have a function that I'm doing the admin. And yeah, it's telling me I'm have medium chances and, and showing me carousel, you know, the things that I can do to prevent contacting it. So yeah, that's that that's basically how we were able to um work on this project with the framework. Uh, it's Microsoft Box framework. Um, I think this might have been a rush for, but it's just an introduction. So I don't really want to bore you into um, um, creating one from scratch. I believe you can do that in another session. And so we do. So we try to um, go in line with um, uh, topic for this. So yeah, this is just basically how we created it. Now. How, how do we now get to deploy this? So right now we have um, our Node.js application. We also have um, we have, we have the, the um, bot framework emulator. 
and it is a way of um, connecting to the Node.js application. These things are running on my local. I need it to run on production, right? So um, the docs they have a um, pretty straightforward. I think it's here. Yeah, you have a pretty straightforward way of deploying your bots, where you can just come here. They're using JavaScript. Um, to create the bots. So, yeah. You could see all the things I ran and um, npm is installed, bot builder, and the other bots. So, um, so yeah, to deploy the bot here, you can see you can actually use um, um, PowerShell to deploy it. And I think that's, uh, and that's what we, we included here. Instead of going to the Azure portal, you just cre create, you set the subscription you want to use. Um, you log in, set subscription, then um, just use, do this partial command, or you can just deploy via an ARM template. But I'll show you how I deployed mine. So yeah, yeah um, for you to have your app running in production, you actually need to register the, the sorry, for you to have your bot running in production, you actually need to register the bot on Azure. And, First thing you will need to do is to create um, a bot registration on Azure. So I'm here logged log in on Azure. I will go and try to create um, try to create a bot. So that type bot should come up. Bot channels registration. I need to register the bot. So yeah, I'll create a bot channels registration, and that's a country for support. So it's asking for um, bot and just like the name of the bot. It's asking for the resource group you want to use. I have a couple of resource groups here. Um, it's asking for location, pricing. Uh, so there's the free one. That's L0 and there's um, S1, which is not free. So you have to put the message, messaging endpoint. A messaging endpoint is just, um, you can see on my local app <coughs> that my bot is listening on localhost 3978. And that's, that's created by Node.js for me. So you need to deploy your Node.js application and put up the endpoint here that the bot channel will listen to. Then, of course, you need your app ID and the app password. Yeah, you can create a new one or it will auto create it for you and you just copy it from there and create it. I won't be creating this because I already created one or so I'll just go to the one I created. So yeah, I have all my resources here. I'll filter by subscription. I think I'm to my Azure student subscription. So yeah. Um so yeah, you can see these are the these resources I deployed. So first and foremost, let's go to the board channels registration. Aha, yeah, so yeah, where I'm moving around my mouse is the subscription ID. I'm going to be using a <coughs> very um um an extension on Chrome that will not allow you to because this is actually not meant to be public. Your key. So but so what the bot channel um, registration does for you is to create that which is to register that button on Azure. So yeah, you can come here and do testing web, web chat. That if you have deployed the main application. Uh, I'll probably have to wait for it to come up before. So, so instead of having to stress yourself, you can actually test your bot locally. So you know locally, you can test your bot on the Azure portal. And you see just the way I'm chatting with the bots on my local, I can start to put here in Azure portal and share up from here. So yeah, I can also set up um, the registration of chat for various channels. So yeah, I can see that I have it running on Facebook and web chat. Uh, I can see some of the issues that I have. And this is, this is the to do. So if there's any, if anyone encounters any issue while trying to load your application, you see a lot of all those 
issues here. So for those for the web developers, you can actually um, get an iframe source from the Azure portal. And what that does is you can come here and copy the iframe. If I copy this iframe and load this an application, you will see my bot in that web browser. So you can use that to integrate your bot into any existing website that you have today or connect it to any of the other channels like Teams, like Slack, like Trilo and various other channels that we have today. So yeah, I'm also going to show you um, how I deployed. So I, I have to deploy the Node.js application separately. And deploying a Node.js application on Azure is just basically you come in here. Um, I can type web app. Okay, type web app. You can select web app, create it. So for me, you can select the resource group that you want to and play to, and then, um, then select the runtime stack. So in the runtime stack, I'll come here and I can select the exact Node.js um, um, version I want to run it on. So yeah, then, well, I have deployed this already, so I won't be creating this. But what the web app does is to create an app service for you, an app service plan, and the main web app on Azure. So if I come here and check out my resources, you see an app service plan, an app service, and I I enabled application insight. And what application insight is on Azure is um it's just a, a, a um, an analysis on your website. So it tells you the number of views you had each day, and there are any issues. You just see like a graphical view of what is happening on your website. So here I'll come to my app service. So after deploying the bot, I will see all these things showing on the bot. So yeah, you can see I, I had blown out my subscription ID also here. Um, so there's something I want to show you. Yeah, deployment center. So, uh, so here, um, I for my deployment, I didn't really um, stress myself. All I just did was to set up um, 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 CI CD on this application. So I just pointed it to my um, GitHub repo, and from there, pointed it to my master branch. So. Automatically, if there's any commit or any PR that I merge my master branch, it automatically reviews the application and runs it over again. So you can see um, these are the various um, commits I've made to my master branch, and it automatically reviews each of those commits once by one. And you can check the logs as they are deploying the applications to see what is going on while you are deploying it. You can see that it's getting all the dependencies, load version, npm version. Another step. So yeah. And there's one other thing. Yeah, Lockstream. So Lockstream, so there was an I had an issue while deploying this application initially. Um so I could come here and check logs of what is happening. In the same way you check logs on the terminal here yeah, while in local. You can actually check logs here also. You check you see the live logs, logs of what is happening. Let me see if I can access it. It could be not any. So that's the application. So yeah, that's the application. So you see the um, direct logs of what is happening as they are happening. Sorry, as people are accessing your website, you see the direct logs coming up here. So you can use this to um to investigate what is going on, or what is happening on your bot. Valium production or um, test or whatever. So, yeah, that's basically on um, deployment. So, that's how we're able to deploy the application. Um, so, yeah, let me just go back to my slides. 
Yeah. I'm going to update this slide on resources. I'll be sharing this slide after the talk, so I'll update it. Lots of resources for you to learn and to build reports. But yeah, the idea, the overall, um, what I really want to achieve in this session is just to see, show you a lot of things you can actually do with God framework, and then to show you an existing project and how how it is, how it works, and all. So so yeah, um, I don't know how the schedule is like. Like we can have another session where we can now do a, a more of hands-on session on creating a board from scratch. Yeah. But I, I just feel that that would take a lot of time, and I don't have all that time to do that. Space. So yeah, that's pretty much um what we plan to do. So thank you guys for joining my TED talk on. Introduction to the post framework. I, I hope I'm able to convince and not to convince, confuse you that um, conversation is what will drive the future and you need to get tired on building post framework, but amazing bot to post framework. So, yeah, thank you. If you have any questions, kindly let me know. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, thank you very much. It's so, been a great any... uh, session. Oh, I, I just have a few comments. Uh, how can I get a student subscription? Sorry, what did you say? I'm asking that uh, how can I enroll for or apply it's for a student, student subscription? subscription? Okay, great. So um, you can so to get a student subscription, um. I will send you the link right now, but let me just show you. I think you can see my old extra guys. Yeah, so let me go to uh, where's my browser. Uh, so you need, you need, um, need, so you need, you need, um, you need a, you need a student email to get a, um, um, student subscription. So you check Azure, just Google Azure for student. So you see the step-by-step -step process of how to get it here. I know University of Lagos students have a student mail, so you can just come here, sign in with your student mail and activate it. And that's all. You don't need to input any card details or whatever. And from there, you get $100 on Azure. So I'm sending the link to the chat now. Um, so yeah, that's the link. So you can just follow through from that link and you activate your student subscription. Thank you very much. Does it mean that after the red light is exhausted, I will not be able to continue any? Oh, yeah. So there are, there are, there are free resources on Azure that you can actually still use while it is, when um, your $100 is exhausted. You can actually apply for a renewal. can, but it, it, it's not all that smooth. But you actually can. I, I have done it before. I got a renewal, kind of. But just just make sure that you manage the hundred dollars. Shouldn't be you shouldn't be spinning up any VM. VMs are actually the ones that take much of your money. So just do like basic stuff. Man. Make sure you delete whatever resources you are, you are creating, so it won't keep reading. Because you pay for every single second you spend on Azure. Yeah. Thank you. This. Welcome. Um, do you have any other question? Okay. Do you have a question? Okay. Um. Yeah. Good evening. Thanks so much. I do Hello. have a question. Yeah, you can go on Isaac. Okay. No, so this is not so Isaac. What? Okay, Isaac, go ahead with your question. Okay. Like, what the best practice for projects that one can easily carry out as a fresher? Let's say for the fresher part. As the fresher, let's say that you can easily carry a project on the cloud using the Azure, or let's say for a company now, or, or a small business organization, what kind of project can a fresher start up with, like to carry out a project in the cloud? Okay, okay, so uh, let me just quickly answer that. So for, let's say for a startup, for example, I believe most startups today, first thing first, they try to get a website, right? 
So um, we have a website. You can actually deploy that website on Azure and set up CI/CD for that website. So you don't need to stress yourself because I know um, startups they change a lot of things on their website. So you can just set up like a CI/CD, have a dev branch, then have like a like a working branch, maybe your name dash dev, then where you can actually any updates that you have. You don't need to start changing anything. Just commit and it's automatically change on production. So you can start with that. Start with the set up like an application insight. What application insight to just do just give you like a um, overview of what happens on your website every day. So that way you can also use it to track what is going on in your website here or there. And you can also and th th that's like one of the basic things you can do on Azure. Creating and deploying a website on Azure. And you can also try out the bot framework also. And just set up like a simple bot for your your website. A lot of people like conversations. A lot of people like all those um, chatty UI you get. So you can actually do that also. Uh, I think I don't know if someone else wants to say something about it. I know there are, there are lots of experts that are just a small boy here. But yeah, that's that's just what I think you can do. One of the, some of the things you can do as a startup or just get to fire with you know, as your environment. Hello. Uh, can I ask my question now? Yeah, sure. Hello? Sure, sure. Okay, okay. I'm Emmanuel. Okay. No, he's Emmanuel now. Okay, Emmanuel. Okay, uh, the, my question is uh, simple. It means before I can set up a bot, as well as the same way we've seen with similar or other projects, it's, it all starts with having a valid... Uh, Resource group with a subscription and every details already created before I can go to my development uh, hand and start uh, deploying the, the bot, right? No, no. So, for you to okay, so if I get your question, well, for you to build the bot on local, you don't need to create any service or resource on Azure. Okay, sorry, then how do I then link it to the Azure uh, portal? So go, Azure Portal is when you want to deploy it, when you want to go live, when you want other. I people. want it to go live. Yes. Okay. It's when you want to go live, you will now go to Azure Portal. If you check right here, um, all the things I've been doing here are local. You can see if I stop this. Um, yeah. Stop then, this. then how do I get linked to the all those resources? Talking about the builder, the the portal. That's a developer portal. Yeah, so yeah, as, uh, yeah. I think so. How do I get because I, I want to believe those ones reside within Azure, they are tools, right? No, so they are, they are, yeah, they are tools, but they are open source libraries, meaning you don't need to go to Azure to get them. You can actually just oh, okay. uh, do so. For example, I did not go to Azure to start up any project on this. All I just did was do npm install bot builder. Bot Builder is a package of Microsoft, but it is not. Um, it is not. On Azure. You don't have, need. Yeah, you don't need. You don't need an Azure account to use it. All you don't need to do is to install it and use it straight up. Because when you want to deploy, you now do something with Azure. You don't do anything with Azure when you are developing a local. And yes, I, I I said I will update my slide. I will put up the links to each of those SDKs for Python, Node.js, and .NET. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other question? Uh, yeah. Hello? Hi. Hello. Okay. Can I ask my question now? Yeah, sure. Okay. So my question is, when you deploy a website on Azure, do you get a okay. domain name also? Or how does the domain name happen? Okay. That's great. So when you deploy a website to Azure, they automatically generate a, a dot azure website dot net domain for you so um come back here i'm sorry yeah, yeah. so when i come here and i check overview you will notice this is the website this is the node.js application i deployed to azure so if you check very well um you see dot azure website dot net so by default when you deploy a web app on azure you have the name of the web app dot azure website dot net 
straight up from there. So a lot of of course most businesses do not want to use the .web Azure website website .net. So for you to now create your own cost domain, you need to go and create a custom domain on Azure and point it to that web that your dot Azure website .net. So practically, if I want to have like say um dot msp unilag dot com instead of dot azure website dot net i'll go and create a domain for it and map it to it right so so okay. so by default so by default azure just gives you that dot azure website dot net but if you want your own custom domain you need to go and create it okay sorry so getting the custom domain now is charged for my hundred dollars right yeah 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 sure 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 the charge of your okay, so, so let me so for for my hundred dollars now, oh, yeah, yeah. getting a domain takes out of it, and then the hosting is free, right? Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so another yeah, yeah. question I have is, uh, how do you deploy? You know, like when you want to deploy your Node.js app now, you have a lot of files. Uh, does Azure support FTP or do you use SSL or how do you deploy? Okay, so yeah, Azure supports FTP and SF. TP and all those ones. Um, so let me sh uh, show you this. <laughs> Love, okay, my, the extension I'm using here just below the Lord because uh, you will not be able to see that. When you deploy, when you, when you, when you, um, when you, when you create the, uh, the web app on Azure, Azure gives you that, um, um, it gives you username, password, and all those things to connect via an FTP client or SFTP client to deploy wherever you want to deploy. Do you get? But I didn't go through that process because I don't like it. I don't like having to copy my files and paste it somewhere and all those things. Okay, yeah, it just came up now. So yeah, you can see get published profile. You can see um, I have my GitHub here. I have the URL. I can click here, get published profile to generate to download. Um, a settings file for me. This settings file contains the, the all the things you need to actually connect to this web app that I've deployed to Azure. So from there, I can, I can on my local um, connect via FTP and upload, FTP and upload to it. But for me, I don't go through all that process because I feel the stress and old fashioned. I can just put it up on GitHub, make sure it is running the normal way it works. Um, State in my package or JSON that you need to do npm install and npm start and tell it the entry file to call and straight up I won't do anything. I would, all I have to do is to go to my deployment center and tell it which um, tell it to deploy from a GitHub account. Straight up. Okay, so can I ask another question? Uh, sure, sure. Okay, the question now is, when you deploy a web app, you know, some web apps have uh, a lot of data, a uh, data-driven website. So, okay. okay, for example, I write Laravel and most of my codes are data-driven. The page is generated with the data from the database and GitHub does not support uh, me using a database. So, how do I deploy directly from GitHub? Because the site cannot work on GitHub because GitHub does not support the data Base and stuff. So how do I run it directly from GitHub when it is not working on GitHub? Okay. So uh, let me. I just want to confirm something. So look, you can see here uh, various frameworks um, that are set up. You can actually create a Laravel application straight up from here, and it will have all the environments you need to do what you want to do. I think I found another. So Azure has support for most of all the technologies you use to do. Um, yeah, so I saw something else. So yeah, you can see PHP Linux server. So they have support for most of the frameworks we have today. So if there isn't PHP Linux server with Laravel Plus framework, you can just create this. And this one will set up everything you need. And it's not every time you use GitHub actually. So if GitHub doesn't support for how it flows, uh, how your your application structure can actually deploy it via FTP client or whatever you want to deploy it via. And you don't need it to work on GH pages or on GitHub basically. You can just add the code on GitHub and this one will point to GitHub and fetch the code. So it might not work on GitHub, I might still work here. So yeah, they have the, so the um, environment to set up for you to be able to use whatever 
framework you are using or library you are using for your application. Hello, are you there? Hello. Oh, uh, hello, hello, Mide. Hi. Hello, hello, Mide. Yeah, hello, I can hear you. Hello, hello, Mide. Yeah, hello. I can hear you. Hello, hello, Mide, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So, hello, uh, I can hear you. Is that it, or you still there are still more things to share? Okay. Is that it or do we still have more things to share? That's it, that's it. That's it. That, that's it for my head. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I want to thank everyone um, being on this call. Uh, this is another interesting section being held by Olumide. And um, with this, we can begin to build applications and begin to build but was okay, and um, I, I know subsequently we are still going to have another section whereby only me is going to take us through how to build uh, a proper um, application using bot um, builders. Okay, uh, but uh, this is this section are just for eye opener, open our eyes, some of those things we can do on Azure. So I want to thank all uh, Day especially for taking time to, to come. And I want to thank the University of Lagos students that came together with Olumide to come up with this great innovation. Yeah. And I want to thank the, everybody that is on this call. And um, tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow we'll be having another class. And uh, tomorrow we'll be on Azure Backup and Disaster Recovery. Okay. How do you do backup on Azure? How do you do a disaster recovery on Azure? We'll be having fun and I'll be taking us through. I want to thank everyone that joined us on this call. And I certainly appreciate everyone on this call. And see you tomorrow. And it's my bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye.